When you work a lot in Photoshop, quite often you end up darting back and forth from menu to menu, panel, panel to panel, using all the same commands, but in so many different locations, and sometimes they're not that easy to find. And shortcut keys are great, but don't cover everything. So wouldn't it be good to have it all in one place? Well, today I'm gonna to cover a plugin that allows you to do exactly that. It's called Configurator Reloaded, and you get a little panel like this that you can easily customize and use within Photoshop. I'm gonna cover a little bit of how it works right now. Now we'll cover the install process very quickly later. It's really quite simple, but for now I have it installed, and when I'm in Photoshop, I head up to Plugins, and I've got Configurator Reloaded 2. And I can have up to three customizable panels that I can sort of add and subtract certain commands from. So I'm gonna add the first one in, and it comes preloaded with a, a few different options. And of course, we can customize this if we decide we want to. In the intro, I had these three images open. I'm gonna sort of use that as an example of what we can do because, well, we can set up things like actions uh, that will actually do a lot of this stuff for us. It's not quite the same as when we're editing different photos and need to make minor adjustments as we go. So you can see here we've got tools, we've got select, we've got filter. All this stuff here is pretty handy. But what I'm gonna do for now is I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna delete these panels and start fresh. So I've got nothing at the moment, nothing at all. If I come up to my top right hand corner, I can add a container or a tools container. We'll start with the tools container because what I essentially want to do is add in the tools from the left here that I use the most if that's something I'm interested in doing. I come down the bottom to this little arrow here and bring up this menu, which I can resize, go to my tools and I can simply click the ones that I want. So the rec I'll get the rectangular marquee tool, maybe the polygon lasso tool, uh, probably the two tools I use the most. I can pop the pen tool on there if I want to. And if I'm touching up photos, maybe I want the stamp tool and the, one of these tools here. So I can basically customize what tools I want there depending on what I use the most. So I bring this back, drop it down, and I've got my tools container. Now one thing I can do is I can right click on this container, I can rename it. I can say, most used tools container if I decided I wanted to be very specific, click OK. I can also right click and give it a color to make it stand out. So maybe red to grab my attention. So it's a visual thing for me to easily go to. So I can quite easily go in there and do that. I can even change the order of some of these things by moving them around. If I go to appearance, I can change the font size. So that's just the size of the header. Obviously not a big deal for the tools container. So you've got some level of customization, which is pretty, pretty cool. And then of course I can come up top again and add another container. So I can add in a brushes container if I want to. I can add in certain brushes. So coming down the bottom here to brushes, I can choose my soft round brush. But there's also some other brushes that I use too. I've got a bunch of them here. I use the fur texture brush a fair bit, so I can pop that on there. So instead of having to scroll through all your brushes all the time, you can customize what brushes are here. So essentially now at any point, I can, if I have my brush tool selected, which I would go over here, perhaps I should add it in. Choose my brush tool, fur, and I can actually use that brush all here in the one spot. I don't have to come up here and go looking for it in this menu of brushes and folders that I have here. I can just be very quick. If I have a brush I love to use, it's all right there, ready to go. I'm gonna go Control Z to undo. And I'm gonna go ahead and add another container because one of the things I was doing a lot with this is I was selecting a lot of objects, I was making a lot of adjustments. So for one, maybe I wanna check the auto select tools so I can rename this to select tools. And I can go into my menu down the bottom here and this is where it starts to get interesting again. You have access to your entire menu. Everything here is actually up the top here also, along with, if I shut down brushes, you've got actions. If you've created actions, you can easily pop any of these actions in here. I, ha I usually set up actions and leave them around, but they're, they're pretty poorly named, but I can easily just drag an action into here. And I've got these two actions there if I decide I wanna do that. But I don't want those right now. I just want to demonstrate that if you have actions that you use a lot, instead of setting up, say, shortcut keys, you can just make a little button here. You can sit there and just click the button with your mouse and simply do that. So that's pretty handy. But with the menu itself, I'm going to go to select. And I can easily drag and drop any of these in. I can select subject, select sky, select a mask so I can make some uh, adjustments. 
And of course I can inverse my selection as well. So I can add this little select panel here. And again, I might right click and make that say green or even a custom color. So I can come in here and choose something that's not gonna to be too outstanding because maybe I really want my red panel to stand out. And again, if I wanted to do that, I can go into my custom color here and really crank up that red if I want it to stand out, but that might be a little bit too crazy. But you can see how that works. So I've got my select tools here. So in this image now, I can select the sky. And I've got the sky. I go back to this, go back to this guy over here, select subject, and he's selected. It's just a lot quicker and easier if you use those tools a, a lot to be able to access them at the click of a button over here to the right. Now there were a lot of adjustments I was using before. So I'll bring this back down and again, add in another panel. So a new container, I'll rename this one, call it adjustments. And I can then go in and find the adjustments I use the most. So if I go into image and adjustments, instead of having to come up here every time and scroll through and find the one you want, because I quite often can't see some of the ones I'm after. Some of these have shortcut keys, some of them don't. But I can simply go in there, I can add in my curves, I can add in things like vibrance, color balance is one I love to use a lot. And also desaturate to make things black and white. So I can really go through and just go customize these and even set them up in an order. Because once I have this here, again, I can go to, if I decide to invert my selection, so invert to the, to the mountains here, I can go color balance, I can play with that balance to get it looking really quite blue. I can play with the vibrance, it's all right there. And if this is like a bit of a process I tend to use a lot, it's easy for me to go in and simply grab these tools in a, with my mouse. And it's really quite quick. And while I'm a big fan of shortcut keys, like I said, not every command is covered by a shortcut key. And sometimes it's easy just to move your mouse around a little bit as opposed to even hitting those keys anyway. So that is pretty cool and pretty handy, but there's even more to it than that. If I want to, I can readjust and move these around. I can change the, so if I want to put color balance first, I can move that there. I can still right click on this panel, go to appearance. And I have some more options here to customize those buttons. So if I want to make the buttons wider, I can do that or I can make them smaller. I like the idea of having four there. It's just nice and convenient, but I can change the height so they're a bit more substantial if those are the primary buttons I'm gonna use. And I can even change that font size so you've got a lot of options here to customize the look of your panels. So it's not just the color and those basic appearance, you've got that there, that's pretty handy. But if you're someone and you find yourself accidentally clicking a little too heavy and dragging things around, you can go up here and hit lock buttons. And now I can't drag them, I can just simply click them. So setting up these panels is quite easy. And of course you have up to three. I can go up to plugins, configurator and go panel two. And then I have a second panel which mind you, I can drag and move over here. I can dock it pretty much wherever I want. I can have it sitting in this section here and just click and have it float out. The other one is over here. So you can see how handy that is. And I'm gonna close that one to avoid confusion for now. So it's really quite easy to customize. And like I said, your entire menu is up here. So if I come down again, close down image, I've got things like edit, and you know filter so you've got filters you love to use a lot of the time you can create a little filters panel there and use that um, it's just super super handy now we've also got some cool additional commands down the bottom here so a new adjustment layer so if i decide to add that in i'll have to actually unlock the buttons and i can choose which one i want because sometimes i want to add an adjustment layer really quickly and i don't want to have to go back and forth and up and down i want to say add color lookup pop that down there and I can also do things like I can add a button to switch to the default foreground background color so making this that black and white again or switch to or just simply switch which you can do with a letter with you can do with X on your keyboard it'll just switch those so if I come over here and look at these two colors and I hit X it'll switch between those two anyway but you can add that button in as well and what's also cool if I come over here to the top of the panel come down to settings I can export all workspaces or even import workspaces. So if I'm going from computer to computer, I can install a plugin and basically work on that workspace. So it's a pretty straightforward um, process to move some of these things in. And one other thing I missed that I wanted to quickly mention is I can right click on a button and change the color of that button as well. So 
you've got so many options to get this to stand out, look a certain way that you want, and it's so it really is a good little efficiency plugin to free up a lot of time. Now, installation is pretty straightforward. When you buy the plugin, you simply get a CCX file that you can double click on and it'll open up in the Creative Cloud desktop and you can install it and then it'll just simply appear under your plugins menu. So it's a very easy installation process. So if you wanna check this plugin out, check out the link below. It's pretty handy, like I said, great time saver. So I hope you found that interesting and useful and uh, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like. Otherwise, thanks for watching. I hope to see you again soon. Have a great day.